awesome that uh, I'm amazed that uh, so many people uh, thought that the right decision was to come to this one. Uh, so hope uh, all of you like it and uh, we're going to basically go through like the process of contributing to Foreman. What is Foreman? Because I'm assuming that maybe some people here uh, don't know much about the tool. And what kind of um, what kind of features uh, do we need fix? Do we need to fix? Uh, what kind of um, programs do we have uh, in order to fix those things? So uh, before I start. Uh, this is, uh, I, I just added this is light. If you guys use Foreman in production or even in a development environment, uh, take a picture. It's, um, it's our uh, survey and we're trying to figure out what you guys like, uh, what you guys um, want uh, for the next versions, uh, what are your feelings towards how we do versioning, how are your feelings towards uh, our support on, on IRC, the mailing list, and so forth. So I'll uh, just leave it there for five seconds and uh, we can start. Okay, okay now I know who actually uses Foreman. Thank you. Okay, that's it. Okay, uh, so uh, why am I giving this talk? Uh, I uh, that's my Twitter handle. I write uh, software uh, for DevOps, so DevOps tools, I guess. Um, so I wrote, uh, I, I work in Informant uh, proper. So uh, my work these days uh, mostly uh, is on Foreman Core and Foreman Docker, which is a plugin that we're trying to 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 make so that you guys can use uh, containers and manage them and, and manage uh, private registries. Uh, and the Puppeteer part, I guess it's because I uh, prefer Puppet to other configuration management solutions. <laughs> uh, anyway, so mm, if you guys don't know what Foreman is, it's a um, lifecycle management tool. So basically uh, you can get an inventory of your machines and you can uh, get uh, your, so Foreman takes care of provisioning the instance, which means uh, booting it up if it's virtual or uh, discovering it if it's physical, it, it, and configuring it uh, with, uh, normally with Puppet, but we have, we started to have support for Sulk, and we have support for report for reports from, from Chef. And, and then we take care of configuring during the lifetime of that of that machine. Um, uh, we can do things like power operations. We have role role based access control for for your machines. Um, so it's nice if if you guys have to manage a large installation of of, of machines. Um, so Foreman loves Red Hat, I guess. It's uh, what I want to mean by that is that Red Hat sponsors the project uh, very heavily. Like most of the of the team uh, working on on it full time, uh, work for Red Hat, and Red Hat takes it, packages it, and gives you support. Uh, it, it 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 also adds a little more niceties like uh, integrations with Pulp and so and so forth. You can do it with the open source versions as well. Uh, but Red Hat gives you support. Uh, these are some of uh, the Foreman open source uh, clients. So if you guys, uh, I don't know, have like contacts there and you're thinking in uh, using Foreman, uh, then uh, you can reach out to them. Uh, some of them, uh, like CERN used to publish uh, how they use it, like their setups, which are very interesting to see like the, um, um, how do they how do they make their foreman hi highly available and, and, and so forth. All right, so uh, the idea is that we're going to go through three main parts. Uh, where, like where should you make th this contribution? How, how the process is? And lastly, I'll give you some ideas and uh, hopefully by the end of Boston and Config Management Camp, uh, we'll have uh, one pull request by some of you. Okay, so uh, where, uh, ooh, in French, it's, 
let's start with the most obvious one, uh, technical contributions and how to do them. Um, our process is very uh, simple. We have a public issue tracker um, in which uh, you guys, uh, so it's the URL right there, uh, projects at the foreman.org. Uh, you guys can uh, cre uh, create issues if you use foreman and you uh, want to tell us uh, that something is not working as it should or, or, or something like that. Uh, you go there and tell us. Um, you can also, if you're trying to figure out how to contribute but you don't know how, you go there, pick an issue, and start working on it. Um, obviously, it's, it can be hard if you're, and daunting if you've not uh, worked, uh, if, if, if it's your first contribution, so we'll uh, go through it uh, la later in the, in the how to contribute uh, section. Uh, once you have when you, once you have your 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 issue done, you go to GitHub slash the foreman, uh, find the project that you want to submit your issue to your your fix to sorry, and it'll get reviewed by someone from from the team. Depending on the project, it'll be um, it'll be one member of of the foreman uh, team. Uh, once you get some contributions, oh, it, it will also run in Jenkins, and it will. We'll, we'll go through it later, but it will run in Jenkins, and it will run uh, some tests. If you make a lot of contributions, or so that uh, we can more or less uh, trust that you'll be sending uh, nice code, we'll be uh, running uh, your tests automatically. Before that, we need to review it quickly and act it. Okay, so that's. Uh, one part uh, that that was that was it for for technical um, contributions like really uh, writing code in, in any of the projects. Uh, something that we uh, probably need help with is uh, packaging. Uh, you guys can uh, either uh, come up with support for other systems. Right now, we're only packaging in RPMs and and DEBs. And even uh, some plugins are not packed as as, as devs because it's uh, difficult in some cases. Uh, we uh, we we have a like a little bit of a hard time to figure out like the the dependencies and keep up have, we have to keep up with the SDLs in in CentOS and uh, if if you're making contributions that have dependencies like you're uh, you're making a Mm, let's say a plugin for Ansible, and you need a Ansible gem. Uh, well, you have to uh, submit a pull request there with the packaging for uh, RPMs and and depths. Uh, at least RPMs. That's the only one that we enforce, but uh, depths are also uh, important for us. So that's what we have right now. Uh, something uh, that I think would be very nice, and it's a community that we have not been. Uh, targeting and um, maybe some of you use it. It's uh, NixOS. If, if you guys uh, can um, see like our specs and translate them to NixOS declarations, it'll be very, very nice. Uh, or Arch Linux, it's uh, pretty much uh, what, what you guys want to, what, what you guys will think it will be useful. Uh, so Audits, uh, some of you, at, at least uh, when I worked with Foreman uh, in a production environment, there was, there were, we had the security team that made make sure that uh, like permissions were enforced properly, that the roles were working as people uh, thought they were working. So uh, something that would be useful is uh, if you guys find errors or and related to permissions or to or security problems, either on the way that Foreman is is deployed with the installer, or either through uh, either with the with the way Foreman actually works, uh, you can uh, either if, if it's not very critical, uh, you can just go to the issue tracker that I posted. Yes, that I posted uh, before. Or if it's very critical, um, then we have a Foreman slash Foreman dash security uh, uh, list that you should send your your issue to, your uh, report to. 
so that uh, it can get, it get so we can make a CVE out of it and it will get fixed in, in, in time. Uh, and if it's really important, we'll probably make a minor release uh, so that your fix can go in. Um, but anyway, uh, most of the team uh, doesn't really have a production installation with thousands of, no thousands of nodes and thousands of users or um, dozens of users depending on your case. Uh, what I, what I want to mean by that is that uh, you guys uh, are a critical part of it and if you let us know that something is wrong, uh, we have to take it seriously. Okay, so um, plugins is uh, another area that you guys can help with. Um, there are a lot of plugins that do not have uh, much uh, users, many users, so uh, in this case I chose uh, Shannon DigitalOcean are really new and not many people are using it on production so uh, if you guys uh, find problems with it instead of uh, swearing and throwing your computer uh, to the floor just tell us what's wrong and even the digital ocean for the digital ocean plugin for instance uh, it, it was started by a guy who who wanted to have digital ocean uh, he's uh, he's not working on the project any on the project where Format and Digital Ocean were uh, used, so it's kind of abandoned. So, uh, like I said, uh, tell us. Uh, we'll, we'll go through um, means uh, to contact us and and other stuff later. All right, uh, there's a full list in the format.org of the plugins, and if you've made some plugin that is not in the list, it's a wiki, so uh, we trust you. you change it and, and hopefully uh, you'll get more users. Uh, so for non-technical non -technical contributions, uh, it, they're also really important uh, and we'll start with the relatively easiest one. Um, being on IRC is helpful for us, really helpful. Uh, we have like 200 to 300 people in the four-man channel uh, at any time of the day. So, um, especially during uh, the U.S. in the U.S. time zones, there there's a little bit less people um, that are going to be able to help, especially uh, Pacific time. So people are constantly asking questions about uh, failed installations, posting their logs, um, asking about if. X use case is possible or Y use case uh, is possible. So um, even if you don't even plan to start answering questions right away, it's it's useful for us if you're around and someday uh, you see that this guy is, this guy commands, hey, so I'm I want to use format with uh, Tiff. What kind of um, what kind of gotcha should should I uh, be warned for? Uh, so uh, just hang around, and if you see anything that you think you can answer, uh, great. Uh, and translations, uh, I'll go through how to translate a uh, few strings. It's a really simple process, and it, help, uh, it helps us uh, a lot. So let me put it there. Oh. OK. So. Uh, we use TransEffect for, for this. Um, the way translations work, uh, you'll see it's, it's really, really simple to, to uh, translate a few strings. Uh, we have a few languages that are almost 100% translated, like uh, I think it's French, Spanish, and uh, I think it's German is, is the next one. It's a little slow. Hmm. Okay, so here you can see. So I if you make an account here, you go to the organization foreman. Uh, it, there, it, it's on the on the foreman docs site. I'll show you that later. So uh, essentially, you come here. Uh, if you see one language that that you uh, speak well, there are many more. They're even like. Um, there, there are languages that have uh, very small translations because maybe it's only a plugin that it's translated. 
but it was translated only for uh, one point, for formal one point something, 1.0, and now there are many more strings. Um, but anyway, uh, so since I speak Spanish, I'll uh, pick that one. Uh, so I clicked on the Foreman organization, then uh, Foreman discovery needs some help. I click on translate, and uh, basically you see here these strings that do not have a uh, translation. You click on it. Uh, we have a glossary for terms because we know that things like provisioning, host, uh, they don't translate well in some languages. So in this case, auto provision, it looks like auto, auto provisional, it, it looks like it was auto provisionamiento. So I guess it, um, So, okay, we save it, and now for the next minor, for the next minor version, we'll, uh, sorry, for the next major version, sorry, of format, oh, we will uh, get that translation and put it, and put it uh, in the in the package. And also, uh, you don't have to translate. You don't have to. Um, your users do not have to use. Uh, the translation that you choose, uh, so y you can have like a different uh, locale for uh, depending on uh, on the user. It's like it's configurable. All right, uh, design. Uh, we don't really have people working full time on design and format, as far as far as I'm aware. And uh, it's an area uh, that it, it doesn't have to be like changing the interface of format. It's it's made with Bootstrap. I can show you uh, more or less. How it works here. I don't have my. Oh, that, that is really broken. Okay, it doesn't look like that normally, but anyway, what well you can see is that it's made with. I mean, it, it's like that because it's because um, that's on my external hard drive, and I, I don't have it connected right now. But anyway, um, what I what I want to say is that um, it's made with Bootstrap and. Uh, also, uh, there are some workflows that uh, need some help. Like, uh, if you've used it, uh, you'll probably fi find the way we associate operating systems and and provisioning templates a little bit complicated. Or associating roles with filters is it's complicated. I mean, it's you, you'll get it after a while, but uh, we think that it can be improved. So, if you guys are uh, UX or UI uh, masters, uh, your help. Uh, in that, in that, in that part, will be really appreciated as well. Uh, the docs, uh, we have a huge manual right now. It's uh, how it works. And okay, I was, I'm going to show it. So this is basically how the foreman.org uh, site looks now. Uh, we have uh, some media like articles that you guys publish. You can uh, submit a pull request to here and they'll get published there. And if you uh, speak uh, at some conference or something about Foreman, then uh, I think this guy spoke uh, in Linux Australia or something about Puppet and Foreman, then uh, we will pu publish it there. It's a simple process. But anyway, um, documentation, uh, we make a manual per release. Um, and basically, the manual covers uh, a lot. Like uh, absolutely mm, anything that we can think of. Um, the problem here is that it is difficult to keep a uh, manual up to date. Uh, like for instance, here uh, it says that this feature is not there. The, we should wait for this feature to be to be completed. Um, so this is in the in our repository, which is in the Git in the Foreman GitHub rep, uh, organization. It's the Foreman.org, and uh, it runs with Jekyll. So uh, it's literally like it, it's markup that it's really simple. It's like uh, it works with Markdown, I think, or GitHub flavored Markdown. And uh, yeah, so you can help us either keep this up to date. Or um, you can think of a way of organizing this better. 
which uh, there are probably many ways to organize this better uh, than uh, it will be uh, it will be reviewed and hopefully it will get in. Uh, for instance, the way we plugins normally are documented as uh, README in the plugin uh, repository. That's not very good documentation, I think. So uh, we started a manual a manual part of the of the documentation in the format.org. If you use any plugin or you want to tell us, uh, here here you go. Uh, with the exception of Catel, which they uh, they went the hard way and they even made their own documentation site, which is uh, really good because it, it's uh, a very full fe full featured uh, plugin uh, for content management in informant. Okay. So, oh yeah, use cases is another another uh, part of of Foreman that uh, people constantly ask about. Um, they want to know how people are using it. Um, we haven't started that, but uh, if any of you are willing to do so, I, I guess they'll probably accept it quickly. Uh, find like some part in the Foreman.org where uh, you w you can write like a small article about how you use Foreman. Uh, it, you don't have to give us like your name if it's confidential or, or something. Just uh, maybe share the way you're you're deploying it. Uh, right now, people are doing that on their blogs, and we aggregate that in the format.org. But um, well, that's uh, another part of the docs that uh, it will be nice to have. Mm, okay. Mm. So how to actually do this? Um, uh, the process is really uh, simple now. It's guided by three friends. Um, so Jenkins and Foreman, uh, they basically run our CI system, which is uh, we run tests. Uh, we make packages, uh, the RPMs and devs that we talked about, and uh, run them in, in Vagrant. And then we run like a fully, um, like a full set of tests that actually connect to to a live form and instance and make sure that everything is fine. And uh, the other uh, Ruby, the other one is Rubicop. If you don't use Ruby, you might not uh, know it, but it basically checks for syntax and and other uh, minor mistakes that you might make in your code or silent changes and so forth. Uh, okay. So basically, uh, the process is uh, simple as I said. You clone, uh, you clone the repository. You make your your changes. Add the changes to the to um, to the um, to the commit. You make the commit. Uh, it has to be in that format. If it's not in that format, uh, Rubicup will warn you. Well, not Rubicup actually. Uh, we have a Mm, Foreman uh, robot that checks the pull requests and we'll check for that. Uh, that's basically linking to the Redmine issue tracker that we that we said before. So when that's get, when that's merged, it's also closed in the in Redmine. Uh, so you do that, you create a pull request. Uh, someone will review it, and well, someone will review it more likely if if tests are passing. If not, uh, you probably want to make your tests pass first. Uh, then you, if, if the review goes well, if it's a minor change and Rubicop didn't complain and uh, it, it can probably go, go in. Uh, if, if people uh, complain about, well, they don't complain. If, if they suggest you like better ways of doing it, uh, just take those into account and you uh, either make another pull request or a force push to that branch. Um, yeah, d just don't take the review process uh, personally. You w we mostly uh, criticize like uh, code. It's uh, we're we're trying not to sound harsh, uh, so uh, just take that and uh, keep that in mind. And if it's fine, it'll be in. And if it's in, it'll be 
uh, it will be merged for a major version if it's if it's a big change. If it's a small change, uh, it will be. If it's a small change that can easily go in a minor version, it, it will be there. Uh, a way to check for that is to is to go to the Redmine issue that it, that you created. In this case, nine three one. You go there and you see uh, what release is is your is your change uh, supposed to be for. Uh, uh, before I for before I forget, uh, we've been support supporting the uh, GNOME uh, OPW the outreach program for women uh, for two quarters already. So uh, if you know someone who's studying or or and wants to help us uh, build foreman, uh, there's a section in in our site uh, with possible projects to to take it's here and it basically goes through the basics of how to set up foreman and some projects that uh, would be interesting uh, right now we have uh, one OPW intern working on uh, foreman and docker mostly okay um, so a few ideas uh, that I'll like to get in uh, and that you guys are looking for relatively simple things to contribute. It's a redesign of the foreman.org uh, in which um, it looks uh, it looks a little dated already, but it's not only that, it's that, like I said, plugins, doc, uh, w we're just having like a enormous drop down where we have plugins and the manuals, versions. Uh, it can probably be improved if you, if you guys uh, want to take on it. it's. Mm. It's an easy way to um, get a first contribution if you're good uh, with designing, I guess. Um, uh, so docs for plugins, if you're using some plugin like, um, like I don't know, Discovery has uh, the, their own uh, docs now, but uh, if you're using some plugin really heavily, I don't know, like uh, Foreman Salt, for instance, uh, you might want to uh, write like about how how you make foreman work with salt, uh, things that would be uh, reasonable to do with the plugin and things that are not, uh, maybe uh, some files, some issues, mentioning the, the things that you'd like to see in the plugin in the future. Okay, um, uh, the foreman UI and the API right now, they, uh, I think they are a little cryptic in, in terms of, uh, they don't give you, it doesn't give you like good defaults if you want to create uh, like a new host or or any object. Uh, uh, it doesn't clearly give you, it doesn't clearly tell you like what are you missing or give you options, like ex examples of how it should look like. Um, if you uh, if you want to help with that, that'll be also very useful. Um, Volumes and compute resources, that's a big uh, one, in my opinion. Uh, we have uh, easy, t easy to users who want to get block device mapping, but they don't have it because we haven't uh, worked much in that regard yet. I've started to work a little bit on it, but it's, uh, so the same for OpenStack, uh, they want to get block device mapping, uh, uh, livered volumes that we have support for them, we can create um, virtual machines with, with volumes, but not with pre-provisioned volumes. So uh, basically any work that help us uh, introduce the store, introduce some storage in hosts, uh, I think it will be uh, highly appreciated. Um, the dashboard, uh, I think when I wrote these slides, uh, there wasn't, um, uh, so th uh, rec uh, recently a pull request uh, with uh, major changes to the dashboard that would allow this uh, came, but basically uh, it's a way to, maybe we want to improve the way uh, the dashboard is so that you can add, um, you can add some queries that you make uh, to facts or to uh, hosts and show like uh, that. 
it's uh, right now it'll be it'll be easier with the uh, changes that had, uh, will come in soon. Um, that one is a little hard. Um, if you're using compute resources like uh, let's say OpenStack for the sake of simplicity, uh, in OpenStack you can go over there and see like the list of images you have, uh, the list of hosts. Uh, but if you don't have these hosts in Foreman, then you uh, have to create them, create them there, then associate them. Uh, similarly, for images, if you don't have the, uh, you have to kind of link your operating systems in Foreman with images. Uh, it would be really nice if, if you guys uh, figure out like any some way of uh, linking, sorry, of automatically associating that. Um, we have a dynamic inventory for Ansible uh, and that uh, some guy made like one year ago or yeah, more or less one year ago, I think. And uh, I tested it and it works with all versions, but uh, it's now abandoned because the guy left the company where he used this. So if anyone uh, wants to start um, improving how the An Ansible dynamic inventory works with Foreman, uh, that would be also a nice uh, initial contribution. All right, uh, so uh, that was that was it for for ideas, how to contribute, and what. Uh, so I'm about to finish just uh, some slides about where to find us. Uh, Foreman.org is where you can find most of the of the official information, like um, the projects that compose uh, that compose Foreman, and the channels and uh, general help. Uh, we have two user lists where you can tell us about uh, anything. Uh, Foreman Dev is mostly based for is mostly focused on discussions about. Um, changes that will be in Foreman, how to, uh, <coughs> how to develop it, and users, it's for help or uh, people uh, just telling us that maybe Foreman doesn't fit well their use case uh, for some reason. Uh, and then it's, I forgot to write it, uh, it's Foreman security, which um, you can send uh, security, re security reports there. Uh, then again, the RC channels, uh, please hang out there. Uh, if you use a BNC, uh, then you can be there all day. And if someday you need some, if someday you see some, some question or something and you, uh, and you work in that area, you can help us. And that's the repository. We love new, com new contributors. And well, thank you all for coming and thank you uh, especially if you made some contributions, uh, we're in the um, we're in the um, uh, I don't know what what's the name of the building, but it's the CentOS stand. Um, we hold uh, office hours tomorrow from one to three. If you want to come by and ask us questions about uh, Foreman or you want help, uh, we'll be there. Uh, we'll, we will also be at Configuration Management Camp from. Monday to Tuesday, we have our own room there. So I hope to see you there if you're if you're um, if you're interested in this area. And uh, if you don't know how to write a plugin, um, I'll go through that process also there. Uh, well, it will be more of a it will be more um, uh, of a technical talk. We'll we'll go through like how to write code for that. And also tomorrow we're speaking, I'm speaking about uh, Foreman and, and how are we going to manage containers. Okay, so that's it. Uh, if you guys want some stickers, uh, I'll be here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> See <you. laughs> I. You guys have any questions or comments? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to.